All right, good evening and welcome to Football in Vivo on Club Deportes, show number 13. Hope you guys aren't superstitious. We air every Monday at 10 p.m. on clubdeportes.com. Follow us on Twitter at Football Austin, F-U-T-B-O-L Austin. Follow Club Deportes at Club Deportes. For all the latest and greatest sports news and commentary, visit clubdeportes.com. Do it every single day. I am your host, Eric McCoy, and I am joined by a man who, after watching Atletico Madrid take on Manchester City in the Champions League last week, has a new favorite formation, the 5-5-0. It's David Alvarez. Well, well, 5-5-0? The 5-5-0. Oh, it's the same one that... No striker, just two banks of five. Vasco Aguirre knows how to work with that, you know? (laughs) Vasco Aguirre... I mean, he couldn't do it with Monterrey, but he definitely... Did a good job I, I, with figured, guys. I figured you were inspired by Diego Simeone and his uh, tactical choices there in that one, David. Remind me of Mourinho a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you love a good, a well parked bus, don't you? You're a man that appreciates a well parked bus. But you know, but I appreciate those guys. You know, they they like to live in the edge. For sure. Uh, I am also joined by a man who uh, has been inspired to take up archery. After seeing Maxi Arruti <laughs> score in consecutive Austin FC matches, it's Jorge Chavez. Yeah, he uh, he from now on shall be known as the Green Arrow. <laughs> so <laughs> I think Arruti, after the Green Arrow. After I make a good point on the show, I'm just gonna give a little. Yes, yeah, one of those. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we're gonna be. Everybody's gonna be. Yeah, I, 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 I gonna was be doing, doing that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I did archery at, at UT. You really? Yeah, really? yeah for, for entertainment. Yeah, oh. just for, really? For fun. Okay, yeah. interesting. Archery in vivo headed your way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Good direction. Yeah, yeah, the UT <laughs> intramurals. You can practice there. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Very nice. All right. Um, I have them on my uh, just uh, for the camera here. My FC Austin Elite shirt. FC Austin Elite, a big weekend this weekend as they took on Tigris Femenil um, over at Elite Field up in Round Rock. I was there. Um, excellent, excellent time. I, I think we should have some, some highlights coming up. But, yeah, it was a really excellent time. I mean, the thing about Tigris, I mean, they those fans traveled. Yeah. Like, it was, but, <laughs> it was pretty incredible. It was, yeah. But pretty the, incredible the, the local Tigris fans are famous. The local the li- li- Libres y Locos are, are, yeah, are very, very supportive hardcore. of both teams. And from what I was able to, I did speak to a couple of the people that came over. The, from they, they came from here in, in Austin, but also San Antonio and Houston. Houston had a big presence. Yeah, they had big several presence. banners referencing the Tigres yeah. Houston supporters. Right. So, yeah. no, no, so, it's a big team here. Yeah. Every time they play. Yeah, they I play pulled play. up in the parking lot and it was just There's tailgating, just, just, yeah. drilling, just, it was, it was incredible. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was, it was great. really yeah. an, an incredible sight. It really sight. was nice. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, from, from a, an FC Austin elite perspective, scoreline, you know, not 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 so great. Not so great. Uh, five nil. Yeah. Uh, Tigris uh, were, were victorious in this one. I have to say, okay, so Tigris scored thirty seconds into the match. Yeah, I had just fired off. Here we go. Here are the yeah. highlights. It, it, it comes at you real quick and real fast right yeah. here uh, from Tigris. They score right away. I was just firing off my my opening tweet, letting everyone know, all of our wonderful followers wow. know, I was that at was the match. Some- and but yeah. as I was looking down, I actually missed this goal. So th- this is me seeing it for no, the first I, time. I, I, I was, was looking at my phone. Yeah, I was I was up in <laughs> the booth. That, yeah, I thought so they were I, just I was walking. Like, now, okay, but, like, but after that, there, there you go. There, friend Natalia, of the show. Friend of the show, Natalia Blanco, Boston Infield. Okay, so after that goal, got off to a very very rocky start. But for the rest of the first half, uh, FC Austin Elite played quite well. And is the right here? I guess was uh, was the second, the second uh, Tigre, goal. Tigre goal. Yeah. That comes in the in the thirty six minute. Yeah. So I mean that goes to show for you know a good uh, you know, thirty five minutes. FC Austin Elite held their own against one of North America's best. Yeah. So I, I think that that is a really really good sign for for FC Austin Elite. This is just their second match of the season. Played St. Edwards um, in the first match. But um, yeah, just just a couple things about the just the experience out there. I, it's, it's a wonderful time. If, if people haven't been out to this facility, it, it's up in Round Rock. It's not not too far off of 35. Right. It doesn't take much time to get up there. David, I know you're real. You're a busy guy. You got a lot of stuff going on. I'll, it won't take you that long to drive up to to Elite Field in Round Rock. It's just right there, off uh, off the highway. You get up there real, real quick and easy. So anyone out there, yeah, it's it's a nice nice simple trip. You get. Um, I, I do personally kind of like being high up at at games. Uh, I love the press box vantage point uh, yeah. for Austin FC. 
this one, you're going to be close. You're going to be right there, um, yeah. real close to the action. So you hear all do, the do players talking. Yeah that, 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 yeah, that was like it. The first goal was like way too easy for me, but anyways, <laughs> I, I, I got to yeah. tell, tell you that that I went to Round Rock like not long ago. My son was playing seven on seven there in a big complex. I don't know if the same one. Uh, so I went to go pick him up. The seven on seven. I mean, yeah, people. It's huge. Yeah, it's, it's a, a huge, huge. It's a huge facility. Yeah, yeah. There's so yeah, tennis courts and all baseball, uh, little league and recreational. There's it's it's a really really nice you know, nice facility. So bring your baseball bat, David. Yeah, I'll be go. there when you go. I'll you be, can, can uh, do some uh, home uh, run derby. Besides, we can go there and, and go see the the, and the, the Georgetown uh, games this weekend too. Yeah, and um, the, the fields are are very good, and uh, I did see I you know commenting on the game. Uh, they were a little. They they need to gel a little better. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, how how, do, how would you rate the performance here, Jorge, from, oh, from FC Austin Elite? Five zero says it all, really. Uh, but you know, they they just hired the coach. I think this was the first game yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. They also got hit by an injury uh, pretty early on, a pretty significant injury. Yes. Um, her, I if, if I'm not mistaken, too, with their starting forward. So that that crippled them. You know, literally, in, in trying mm -hmm. to attack, and they they really didn't. They weren't a problem for for Tigres, and the, and Tigres. This was a little bit of a combination of of A starting players, B and C type players. So um, you saw a lot of three digit numbers for some of yes, some of these players. Yes. So, but but you know, but the quality is the quality, and. and you know, like I told one of the, I think it was Natalia is, is the one that I ran into, uh, you know, after the game, you know, you need to get, to get better, you need to play these types of games, even if you lose. And and they openly admit, you know, they're still getting, gelling, uh, getting to know each other better and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but they have their work cut out for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be sure. I mean, yeah. I was really impressed with Tigris. I, I thought Tigris were, were yeah. outstanding. Just a lot of their attacking movements were just really... Really exceptional. So yeah, I mean, you know, FC Austin Lead certainly did have their their work cut out for them in this match. And I actually think we have returning to the show Danny Woodfill, the GM of FC Austin Elite. Welcome to Football and Vivo. Welcome back, Danny. How are you doing? Hey, hey, thank you for having me back. I really appreciate it, uh, especially after the weekend that we had. It's good to uh, get out and talk about it. A little ther little radio therapy, little. Uh, little TV therapy here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so how would you rate the performance, Danny? We were just kind of discussing. I mean, Tigre is very impressive. I know you guys are just in, in the second match uh, of this of this young season. How, how pleased were you or how displeased were you um, with the performance of, of the FC Austin Elite players? You know, uh, one, we expected it. I mean, this is Tigre. It just wasn't – we didn't bring in a, a lesser team. We didn't bring in a, a weak team just to get a good match in. Uh but we knew going into it, we knew that we didn't have the roster depth that we need. We know that we didn't really have the people in the right positions that we wanted to. So it was going to be tough, like right from the beginning. And then they scored like 30 seconds in. It was funny. I was talking to Diego Fagundes. I, yes, I saw yes, him he, out there. He attended yeah. the game. That's right. Really yes. cool. George, George and I missed it. So, like, I had to go and, uh, and ask. I was like, hey, what happened with that goal? Like, Holy crap! I missed it. I and missed he's like, it too. I was tweeting. Uh, Never tweet uh, he, when you're trying to watch. Yeah, exactly. you're trying to like, watch a game. I, I I hit I hit start on the timer and I turned around to say something and all of a sudden everybody went crazy and confetti went everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's aw awesome that they brought confetti. Huge fine for uh, confetti use like that. So that was pretty cool uh, right from the beginning. But. Uh, uh, but missed it. So I went down to asked Diego and he's like, man, they just had such good touch like they did that on purpose it was almost like a set piece it was almost like they worked on that that is their you know that was their kickoff play like let's see what we can do and they executed it flawless i'm like i mean it had to be our fault right like like you don't get scored on and you don't get scored on in 45 seconds and it not be your fault right and he's like i don't know man that was really good so i was like all right you know he knows what he's talking about sure I'll, uh, I didn't see it. I'm not going to go back and rewatch it. I don't need that. So, no, you don't uh, want Yeah, you don't, you don't need yeah. to see that. So, you know what? Uh, that, that was, okay, I'll, I'll give it to him. Uh, like someone just said, you know, for the next 35 minutes or so, I, I think the team fared pretty well. They, uh, you know, 
Uh, we weren't a threat. We, we need offense. I'll be honest with you. This was Coach Lessa's second day in town. Yeah, this, wasn't, uh, this wasn't just her first game. This was, she got in late, late, late Thursday night and was there Saturday uh, at this game. So, uh, so you know, it's, we're going to be recruiting new players. We're going to be bringing in what we needed to do anyways. But now that we have a full-time regular coach, uh, she can sign off on, on getting new players and, and picking up more talent and, and get the players in that are going to execute her plan to, uh, to her liking. But to be fair, by the time we got into the second half, I think we – re-entered a couple of players and uh uh the tigres coach was like that's not fifa you can't do that and it's like look we're i mean we're getting beat down out there like we really need we need something because we just didn't have the bench depth and the player depth to go 90 minutes with a team like tigres they're second in mexico right now they're in mid-season form yeah. right now they're they're doing fantastic this is our second game and to be fair we kind of overlooked St. Ed's. I don't. I don't think we did as we didn't prepare as well for St. Ed's, thinking that like, oh, I can't wait till we play Tigres. Uh, yeah, huge, huge mistake. And and honestly, not having a coach, uh, you can make those mistakes. Having your GM kind of run the program is uh, is not what you want at this level. So now that we have a coach, we've already no, that we've so been talking to are fantastic. So uh, oh. No, this has been a hard couple of days. I'll be honest with you. That's uh, there's definitely a little bit of a come to Jesus moment when you have yeah. uh, when you have a team like that, uh, you know, really show you what they're made of, and, and you're like, oh wow, we got a long way to go. It just it just really highlights uh, where we want to be. And uh, you know, I think if we had walked out of there two zero, if we had walked out of there at halftime, it would have been like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you can hang with them. Yeah, yeah, you know that's not too bad. Like like Club America, we can hang, uh, but uh, we didn't. And and especially in that second half, I think as we got uh, further into the second half, it, it just it showed that they were in shape. They were yeah. they knew what they were doing. They they practiced this, and we had not. So our inexperience, our our lack of uh, practice time together, really showed in that second half. And, you know, we still almost at the very end, we didn't give up. We kept playing. We kept trying. And at the end, we almost got a cheeky goal in to give us that yes. uh, moral, moral victory. Moral but, but even that yeah. e- even that fell short a little bit. So it's like, okay, well, back to the drawing board. We get a week off this week, and uh, we can kind of retool and, and uh, you know, invite, invite new players out and, and recruit those, those players that we already had on our radar get them in for our next game so uh, I, I think I think the future is bright all the players now know when we say you're not fit enough and they're like but I'm I'm plenty fit no okay there's a different level of fitness when you're talking about playing a team like Tigres yeah and yeah. Uh, Absolutely, and I think uh, uh, I, I, everyone knows the goal now yeah yeah for sure uh, well we appreciate you calling in uh when's the next game we'll, we'll let you go ahead and, and promote that when's gonna when's the next game gonna be yeah we're fortunate you know uh we get to take easter off here so we'll train but not not play on on saturday uh we play at home on the 23rd so the following saturday we'll be back at home easy game to watch and if i can go ahead and, and put it out there we haven't put uh haven't put it out in the news yet but uh, early in May, we're going to do a football tournament as well to allow the fans to come out and actually play foot golf with us. So we'll actually oh, put players wow. in the foursomes cool. and, uh, and, and do that. I think that'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a little fundraiser for the Austin Soccer Foundation as well, uh, raise awareness for women's soccer. So win-win for everybody. Great. I think you've piqued David's interest. He's very <laughs> well, yeah, foot golf is. Yeah, I was invited to play foot golf yesterday. <laughs> oh, so so you'll be in shape then. Uh, I will be ready. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate I'm your time, you, Danny, and definitely I'm good luck you uh, as time the season to get progresses. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for having me back on again, and we look forward to talking to you really soon. Oh yeah, right. of course. Right. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah, thank Danny. you. All right. Thanks. All right, Danny Woodfill, ladies and gentlemen. Of uh, FC Austin Elite. Okay, let, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, keep things local here. Yeah. Let's talk about Austin FC, shall we? Let's. Austin Let, FC. Let's go ahead and talk. Austin FC, 1-0 winners last night at uh, Q2 Stadium over Minnesota United. 
Austin FC's third win of the season. Jorge, yeah. give us your thoughts, man. Uh, I, I do want to mention real quick that uh, you're, we give an, an all-view account of uh, football and vivo to the fans. You were in the press box. I was. I was. You were in the in the, in the supporter section. No, what? Well, sort of. I, I was on my celebrating my birthday. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching at home, so we had different I was perspectives. Watching at home. I was yeah, watching it, it was. But uh, you had a festive. You, yeah. you were in a festive mood. Supporter section. Right there, you go. Your own supporter section. Yeah, I have my own fly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I thought it was boring. <laughs> I. Um, but he's got to watch it from the press box, Jorge. That yeah, really uh, I mean, I, I don't. They, they looked, they looked slow. Both teams looked slow. Um, uh, okay, so the, I actually they, okay. they looked. I mean, tactically, they were playing the same kind of position, kind of um, rotation and and alignment. So they sort of looked like they canceled each other out. Well, it, it's exactly right. Like they were playing a, a pretty much a four-three-three. Yeah, yeah, they were both playing four-three-three, yeah. and three, yeah. there was yeah. nothing happening. Yeah, and, uh, you do get that when two teams are playing the same formation. You will sometimes see right. that the, the kind of the canceling out effect. What um, what is what is interesting is um, I actually so at, at, at half at halftime I actually looked up just to see like kind of what the um, expected goals numbers were for this because I was like I, I didn't see a ton. Didn't see a ton of uh, shots on goal. Yeah, a ton of shots on goal. Uh, I don't know. I thought Alex Ring they had a couple of shots on goal. I mean, yeah. So it actually, what, what the but that was in the were, second half, if I'm not mistaken. In the first half, I don't remember. Yeah, no. The first half. So the actually the expected much. goals numbers were 0. .04, .04 .04 for Austin FC, .02 for Minnesota. <laughs> I don't think I've ever yeah. seen totals it was that low. low. I don't think I've ever yeah. ever seen that before. Well, that, uh, so yeah, here we got the highlights. Plenty of me a ton from the first half. Well, the, there's the, a little bit. Like some here. of the highlights they cut in the first half altogether, but. In yeah, this so case, I think the, the kind of the, the as we as we're watching uh, the highlights here, kind of the big I, news. Uh, did we go straight to the second half here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what helping us out there. So uh, there's nothing yeah. happened in the first half. Yeah, yeah, let's okay. go to the second half. But that, that was kind of two not that many hand chances, but this was pretty clear. And then yeah, Alex was, Ring, okay, oh that goodness. was an easy shot that, for Alex Ring. I cannot yeah, believe he missed I, that. Not even close. No, Alex Ring. And then he had two Way more chances. Above like the, that. The, yeah. But this was really good, close. Stuver did a good Stuber job. Stuver did a good, he, yeah. He did a good, very good job with a couple of the saves. And because they had some attack, but they, they couldn't dominate. They, they they were putting a lot of pressure, Minnesota right. was, but once they get the ball, they couldn't control it, especially in the second half. So would, would you credit Austin FC's defense in this one? Like, how are you liking the Gabrielson Cascante it, center back? It was really good. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, Gabrielson, Gabrielson. Uh, yeah. uh, you, as as expected, uh, as advertised, he saw he's he solidified that. But this is the, this is the one that he. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this is, is I want to talk, I want to talk about floor. this one. Do you think that was a decoy there? Do you think Pereira, he was trying to? Yeah. And Pereira do the and he, before he get up, he almost he was still down when Urruti do you think scored was, the goal. Do you think that was a decoy? Do you think he was kind of just trying to keep the Minnesota players' attention? He was he was trying him? to do what. That's the, the player used to do. shall we yeah. that yeah. we shall not mention yeah. loves to do and and he tried to cause a foul in the in the penalty yeah. box. Yeah, he tried he to didn't get a accept foul. it. Yeah, the, the referee well, and the referee was very interesting. But the Pereira uh, pass was, was great. I mean, yeah, Pereira pass. Yeah, he, he, he that shows what, he, what yeah. it was. And then, but you have to say also Fagundes is the one that started the first cross too. So right. You, and, you can and, see that and Jimenez is always very dependable, and he was able to to find uh, you know. Uh, ah, but Maxi also, Ruti. hey, but also but, you got to notice how the goal started. It was a yeah. big error, and also oh, Ruti, this was, yeah. Ruti had a perfect shot. It was the defender so got you it. Put more on that, you think? It, it, it was hard harder? because it was in your face. Yeah, like the goalie was on the face. He did a perfect loop. So yeah, yeah. Right. But, but, wrong the but he couldn't do more power. He couldn't put power. You couldn't put more power. Yeah, there. you can't. Have yeah, he, he, yeah. And, and those and giants they yeah. have in there. And, and, like, and to be fair to Ruti, he, the player that he saw was in front of him. So he was a, was the goalkeeper. He yeah. said, "I'm going to yeah. chip it over." It, it just I, makes but sense. I got to tell you that but, the first goal also was a big error by by Minnesota. They give away that ball, that position. They they, they were they, they forgot got where the Uruti was. Yeah, they saw him down and they on the ground. forgot about him. <laughs> and he and so. But then you have again a couple of other chances. I mean, so many chances. And this is the Chilena. That's the Chilena. That's the Chilena. I think that's. 
Peruvian or something, but Argentinian. <laughs> oh, that's not wow, Chilean. Man. Man. That's We're losing do not insult the player. Do not insult the player. What are you doing? Uh, those, that's those the views do not forward. represent hey. the views of football and Viva. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugo, 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 Ugo from the next lane. Ugo, 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 Please direct him to any guy, any, you know. Hugo would have scored with blind eye there. It's like easy Chilena. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, Davi. Okay. And, and, I mean, and then, then you have this counterattack too. And Fagundes I mean, it, yeah, this always does the same. There in the stadium, it just felt like, man, Austin FC are going to pay for all of these missed chances. It, I, I, I was waiting for, for the like time goal. It. I really was. But that was Fagundes that saved that one. Look at yeah. He saved that one. Wow. Yeah. And he turned around. That. He yeah, saved it and he turned wow. around. He did a turn. He, yeah. he, he, one leg and he turned around. So it was a great. So all of our different vantage points, you were the only one that actually got to see that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw that one. Yeah. yeah. I noticed. But I, I watched all the highlights a lot. I mean, and then that's why I remember that. Show. Like, yeah, I actually recorded the game and, start, and watched it in review. And like, like I said. Did you do any fast forwarding in the first half? I, I did a lot yeah. of fast forward in the first half. Alex Ring is so happy because he missed three clear chances. Oh my <laughs> he's, god! He's happy that they won, and his because he, 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 he did, could not miss those three chances. Any forward, anybody would score those ones. But and Alex Ring, okay, it's not the first time. We we kind of discussed this a bit last week, though. He designated player. I, I, he's basically made a name for himself playing as a defensive midfielder right. in Major League Soccer. Do you think that he is a, a designated player, quality attacking midfielder? No. <laughs> Obviously not. I mean, if this show in this game and in the previous game. So like, do, you, do you think it's a good sign, though, that he's popping up in these positions to get these chances? Yeah, it's a good off, sign for right? a number, for somebody like Cecilio there. Uh, somebody more like aggressive that has more calm when you are in front of the goal. Like a forward needs to be he has cold. Do you, do you not think that maybe with some repetition, maybe more, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Practice, per se, but, of being in these situations but, that he might but, I mean, he's moving well. He's moving, he's getting the ball. He's moving excellent. He knows how to control just, the he ball. He just doesn't finish. But at the moment, he panics. He panics when he's in front of the goal. So I actually, I got a chance to actually talk to Josh Wolf in the press conference. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of. Like and what did you ask him? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually asked him yeah. about Alex Ring. I, I wanted to know because he's, he's popping up in, in all these different places. We saw in the first half in particular, he was really overlapping Ethan Finley. Like Ring would go wide and then Finley would, would cut inside. Right. And in the second half, I mean, Ring was popping up in, in basically where you'd expect a striker to pop up. Well, yeah, that was odd. Yeah, he was, yeah, was, was strange. Yeah, he was playing as his number nine. I was like, what is he doing? He's like number nine. Like, like so, kind of Drusy supposed to be doing. So that's, that's what I question. expected, Drusy. That's the question I had, really, was what was he doing out there? But I, I, it was my first time, so I wanted to make sure I asked it politely. So I yeah. just asked how much freedom does, yeah. does Alex you, Ring you, have? You don't, oh. you don't want to pull a Jorge Turalde when, and when I ask a question. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that is. <laughs> I was trying so, to avoid that. Right. I was trying okay. to avoid the head and down. So. <laughs> Look. And so, uh, but yeah, Wolf basically said, I mean, there's a lot of just kind of synchronized movement. So one player moves in one direction, that triggers a movement from another player to move into right. another direction. And so, yeah, he, he does offer Ring a, a lot of freedom out there. He actually said the movements of Ring and Sebastian Driussi are, are linked with one another. Yeah. And it's interesting because I always kind of thought of Ring and Danny Pereira as being more of the partnership, whereas Ryusi and Aruti was kind of the, a partnership. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, but but I I don't think ex that it's more of a partnership, but uh, in a sense because Pereira, I saw the game and he actually had a couple of decent opportunities to score and he didn't take them. Yeah. It's like he knew he knows that's not his job. His job is to oh, be yeah. more of a defensive uh, midfielder. So he just sort of passed that off to whoever was open. But I, I think he probably could have scored if he really took a shot. So I don't know if, if that's kind of uh, what's been instilled in him to, as his style to open up the, the areas for Drusi and, and Ring. But, you know, it, it's they, they got to settle who's going to be the attacking midfielder. I don't think they can have two of them. No, no, absolutely not. And one of the other things that, that Wolf, Wolf alluded to is that he is really concerned about the, the shape that the players have when they're in possession of the ball. Yeah. And it's particularly the, the shape that they have when they lose that possession. Right. And I actually think that is an area where Austin FC have really improved from last season that is true. to this season. And I think you really saw it in this match. I mean, that first half, uh, Minnesota had like, you know, 35% possession, I yeah. think. They, they, had a lot of you know counterattacking. Right, the counter. I, I don't want to say counterattacking opportunities because they didn't really. Also, they, they didn't, didn't really allow them to yeah, have. They didn't have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. on, I, honestly, I, I thought Minnesota they put a lot of pressure at some point, especially in the second second half. 
They put the pressure, but they, they would did. never. They did. But we never were able to get the ball. They never back. materialized. They was yeah. never. They would never keep control of the ball. It was right. interesting. They the would second, lose control. The yeah. second half, they really tried to play with much more aggression. They, yeah. I, I love it. Q two. They actually have the live possession tracker, and so yeah. you could see like the start of the second half is like sixty five thirty five Austin FC. Yeah, and then and the second half is totally going flipped. And just, yeah, and you could see it from from, from my point of view in the television yeah. that that you could tell that most of the most of the game was happening in the Minnesota side of the. And uh, but they didn't have you know. They and the Austin FC side of the field. But they part. also, they didn't have really a number 10. They didn't have a midfielder that can control well, the ball. Well, what's interesting yeah. is that they have a great number 10, technically, at uh, uh, Reynoso, but he was playing out on the wing. <laughs> yeah. They played him out he was playing on the primarily wing. on the left wing in the first half, right number wing 10, in, yes. the, in the second half. So, yeah, he never really popped up in those, those number yeah, 10 Yeah, he never spaces. really, yeah, he never showed so up. They, they never, so they like, never have more than six passes together. So, Minnesota was not really a big challenge. But overall, but do you think that to an extent, though, because I, you know, I, I think you, that first half it was forty-five minutes. I think it could have been three hours, and Austin FC wouldn't have scored a goal. I mean, they really just looked yeah, they, completely they were, void of ideas yeah. trying to break down that low block. Do you think Minnesota actually did Austin FC a favor by coming out and being more aggressive in the second half? It opened up the, the field. That's for sure. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they, they they did, but you know, honestly, I don't. Th- I didn't see Minnesota. I thought our team did pretty good. I think Austin FC did. Because I feel good. like if we were if football in Viva was based in Minneapolis, we'd be outraged at the tactic of all of a sudden coming out <laughs> to attack in the second half. Because yeah. I just really don't think it worked for Minnesota United. I think they did also see a big favor by switching things up. I think they should have just, you know, continued to sit deep and look for their chances on the counter. I mean, that's, Yeah, because that's, they didn't have the, they didn't have what it takes to do it. Like to, to do the 4-3-3 formation, they didn't have it. Like we barely had it. Like they had less than that. Yeah. Than, 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 was, than that. So but overall, I think it was a good lesson like a, a very good the fact of the win, the fact that Urrutia scored it's just a big deal. And the fact that you have Alex Ring missing all those chances, come on. You're missing three he, clear he, chances. Yeah, he, he that needs says to, that you need, that the team is, have the chances, but we need to score those chances. Like in any other team, you made those errors. You don't to score there, I think it's calling you. So the team definitely needs to get something done, especially now that we don't have a designated player. Okay, so I, the, the big news ahead of the match, um, Major League Soccer has indefinitely suspended designated player Cecilio Dominguez pending an MLS investigation into possible off-field misconduct. Austin FC has declined any further comment. They were very clear about that in the press conference, yeah. that there'd be no further comment on the matter. Uh, yeah, we, we don't even want to speculate as to what might, might be going on there, but I, I, will, I do want to talk about kind of the on-field effect that this will have on Austin FC. David, how will Cecilio's absence affect Austin FC, do you think? How, how badly will it hurt Austin FC to not have Cecilio? I think it's great. I think it's great. <laughs> okay. I think it's great that the I okay. mean, that's what we were wanting for. I told you, like, at the beginning of the year, I say Cecilio is not a man for this team. He should not be the designated player. I don't think he's going to score more than five goals this year. And he did. he's not. And he's well, probably you not. might be. Um, I don't know if, if you know. Kind of a loophole getting that one correct. Yes. The technically, yeah, yeah. I'm just technically correct. But, but the fact is that they, the, they, yeah. the, I mean, I, I, I never really, really liked what he did in the field. I don't think he, he didn't do it in America. He didn't have the numbers. He didn't have the numbers in America. He didn't have the numbers here. He might have the numbers this year, but he wasn't going to make it. And I, I mean, he did, he did fine with Club Guarani the when thing, he was the there positive, for that. For the, the, for positive, the positive thing is that right. it's opened up an opportunity, a golden opportunity for the team to have a real forward or another alternative to Ruti, right? right? Or to, that's what we need, and I think it's a perfect opportunity to find that player, a designated player, because I don't think that Alex Ring should I, be playing. You forward. might be jumping ahead a few steps, Dobby, because as of now, he's still an Austin FC player. So I don't know <laughs> if there's well, any. I want to jump because but, we don't. He's not playing anymore. So we need to think quickly, right? The team needs to think quickly. What, what I would like to, to comment on that is that you know Cecilio, he's he's indefinitely not going to be in the team for who knows. Let's just throw out, out a number five games at least. So they need somebody in the roster now to fill in that place. And I honestly don't think Ethan Finley is the answer because he was he, not he, 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 particularly he good. He sort yesterday. of disappeared. Yeah. And, and he's good in the sense as, um, as someone that comes in in the 60, 65 minute. Yeah. That, that's kind of his role now. More he's, like he's, Gallagher that was doing that too. Yes. Yeah. And so the, the, the Gallagher's fullback so, now. Yeah. So he, the he question, plays, plays yeah. So the, the question is who, who would be a good ideal person to G-10 play there. is not 
and Jita. I, I want to get to Jita in a second. Yeah, I, I want to stick to the wing situation. Yeah, right to now. the and that's where I think well, you make an adjustment and put actually Uruti out there. So who do you put as your central attacker? I think there's better options there now. Who? There's Holson. We had a Danny Holson we, sighting. We had a Danny Holson sighting. So I'm Wolf, brief, but he, he was there. somebody last name Wolf too was there. I think I saw well, the, some yeah, some kid that, called Owen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Uh, Teen Wolf. Uh, and so he's, I I but I'm intrigued by this by by him honestly. Hey, so you, you uh, like the so, idea of moving a Ruti to the wing? Yeah, he need, then, he needs to stay a starter. And we and we well, yeah, did so mention yeah, Ruti started. Yeah, he needs to stay. Oh. So so yeah. like, like I said, if he is he a natural kind of replacement for Dominguez. I would say yes because we said earlier in in in, a, in one of our shows that uh, I see Gite eventually replacing Uruti, but this creates an opportunity. I mean, Gite for, wasn't even on the bench. He didn't, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't on the, on the bench. bench. He was in street clothes, if I'm not mistaken. I saw. Pictures. And I don't think he. There's but, not an injury uh, situation there. No, I, I, I guess he just. I mean, the you last can only, time, last if I'm not mistaken, you're looking, you can only dress a certain amount of players. So yes, yes. You may have just given him a day off. Who knows? But I don't um, know, man. I that doesn't to... bode well for him <laughs> to yeah, be I, given that's what a I'm day saying. off. I don't, I don't think but that's a good thing. But the important thing is a lot of openings. Well, here, here's the thing. Though. Right. Okay, I, I agree 100% with you, David, that Cecilio, he's been a very underwhelming yeah. designated player yeah. for, for uh, us to yeah. see. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think in particular that they will, you know, it's him too much in the starting eleven, but the thing I'll say is that there's not a ton of depth on the wing for Austin FC. No, I mean Finley is the first guy off the bench, and he was he's pretty adequate. anonymous. Yeah, he's he's adequate and as a adequate as, rotational as a substitute. Yes. Yeah, adequate yeah. as a substitute. And then if you're talking about a substitute for Finley, that's Rodney Redis, that's Jared yeah. Stroud, and you know yeah, that's uh, not quite <laughs> not the... so. Not and, so great right there when you start talking right. about bringing, bringing those guys out. I mean, Alex Ring was actually playing out. Yeah, on, he was playing as, as a kind winger. of his position. Yeah, yeah. basically playing as a right winger. To, to and and like match, you alluded to, that's not his position. So he didn't do a very good job <laughs> as a winger, as a forward. No, so, you know, they need to reassess how they're going to replace him. But I will say this. Um, he panicked. If you look, if you compare to Uruti, how did he score his goal? He sort of did the same thing as, and you know, he embellished a little bit uh, in his in his foul, but he immediately recognized that the ball's still in play, and he got up. And, so you think Cecilia would have still been lying? He would have still been rolling around, <laughs> obviously. And, and and that's the big difference yes. that Cecilio, th that's that's his game, that that's what he does. He flops around, you know, he embellishes fouls he, because that's what he wants to do. But and I think honestly, yeah, he uh, honestly, I think the fan base is getting tired of it because I, it's I agree. because it's not producing. Not it's not producing anything. Yeah, yeah, it's not producing anything, and, and so we had high hopes because he did score two goals. He didn't seem to be flopping as much because it didn't require it anymore. Because you know, if you look at it objectively, sometimes when your player does that. It slows down the game and the momentum. It does, yeah. It's and, and oftentimes so, a time wasting tactic. And it's a time players. wasting tactic that sometimes you don't you don't need to do that if you're you know tied zero zero or, or you're up one zero. Oh, so you, not you frequently in the position to want to waste. Except time. for yeah, except for this year they they put it together for at least the first couple of games, so there was no need for that. But again, zero zero, Uruti found himself in a position in the box. He took a chance and it, the, the referee didn't call it. But he didn't give up on the play. Yes. Cecilio does. And, you know, you don't need your DP to be doing that kind of stuff. No, no, I, I agree. With you. Okay, so I want to I want to ask you, David, as, as we kind of transition away from Austin FC, but a couple more things I want to touch on. Mm -hmm. You said, going way back to our radio days, you would give Josh Wolf six, six games, games yes. to start the season, and then you will give your verdict. Yeah. Austin FC have just played their sixth match of the season. You, you Three look, wins. You two look draws, disappointed, David. <laughs> one defeat. Where do you stand on Mr. Josh Wolf? I I stay with Wolf and I oh, oh whoa Wolf in Wolf wow. in no, no, no. You heard it here no Wolf I didn't say in, that I didn't say that oh, you didn't say, okay you didn't say that uh, I didn't just, say that I say right. I never say that I say the <laughs> you never say that never <laughs> no well, strong, strong the situation word. is like well I I give him like, what I see in six game what he has to show right yeah you did say that and and I think you know is and now you're you're backing off that. 
Because no, no, I think he's doing it. I mean, right now, the team, the numbers don't, don't, don't align, right? We're number yeah, four. Yeah. That's three, pretty three, good. Three, three games. Yeah, there we go. There's, uh, there's, 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 there's the... There. So, is easy. Three wins, one loss, and two draws. Yeah, and two, and two, and those two draws were pretty impressive too. Yeah, one so and, and, and some of yeah, exactly. We were talking. Okay, we need to play a team that's going to be more up, and then other teams that we played where they were down. You know, like Miami won now. I mean, yeah, so, they, they won. Yeah, uh, we have having finally big big games, the Portland game, but other than that, I think the team can show that we we don't have is better than last year. I think the, yeah. the team has it, improved from last year. We don't have Pochettino, and now we don't have Cecilio. I mean, but it's you're, getting better. So you're, you're Claudio Reyna. You're, you're, you're keeping Wolf, though, right? You're, you're not making a move to... to, to not to right now. I mean, at the, at the yeah, moment, I, I, mean, if I, yeah, I, would I, be I mean, I wouldn't move it because he, being with the numbers don't lie. So it's all about what are you doing with the numbers. If you have the numbers up there, nothing you can do, yeah. right? That happened to Bielsa. Bielsa is the best coach in the world, but yeah, he had the numbers. All lead back to Bielsa. Yeah, and they are. we're always going to be talking about Leeds that. Leeds is up there. And Jesse Marsh. With Shout Jesse out Marsh. Jesse Shout Marsh. out to Jesse doing Marsh. Well. Yeah, doing, doing very well. So you know, but the people get and they, they learn. And I'm, I mean, I'm with Wolf right now. Yeah, he, I don't I'm think, with Wolf. I want to get you a shirt this right now. And this is moving. Because, 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 and, I, and I sort of agree <laughs> with that because there's no guarantee that Josh Wolf has learned his lessons yet. You could, because you, the, the you game could. that we talked about in the previous game, right? right. Remember, yeah. he went back to the old last year yeah. errors, right? So I mean, God, God forbid we get we have another Copa Texas game and he throws out Rodney Redes in there <laughs> with Eric Stroud. <laughs> mm -hmm. If so does well, that again. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, yeah, right now, now at the moment, right yeah, 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 at the at, moment, at the moment, but end. you know, things okay. can change. I, I, okay, up next is uh, DC United. That is going to be the match on Saturday, right. and, and we're going to do some predictions. Uh oh, and uh, just in case, David, you try and um, you know, not go bold. I've brought out what I am calling the football in vivo. Chicken of indecisiveness. Ah, the chicken, the of, chicken indecisiveness. of indecisiveness. <laughs> Not so if you don't give me a strong prediction, there you go. Make sure you, you get that there, Jerry. The chicken of indecisiveness, if you don't go bold on your prediction, Davi, okay. that, that's going to be your, your pet for the remainder of the show. Okay, DC United, Saturday, 6.30. Nice uh, <laughs> they are currently in 10th place in the Eastern Conference, DC United. Um, they tend to play with like a back three, back five, from what I could tell, doing my, my research ahead of the show. Uh, Hernan, Aslada, uh, Hernan Losada, that, that's how you say yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Hernan Losada. Yeah, they, uh, they uh, like to, to press. He's noted for being a pretty aggressive presser um, as a coach. He likes that strategy. They rank 10th in Major League Soccer in terms of pressures in the attacking third. Um, they were 7th in that stat last season, so they like to high press. So maybe not quite to the extent of, of San Jose, what we saw when, when Austin FC took them on. But, yeah, it'll, it'll be a similar kind of high-octane, high-energy style when Austin FC take on D.C. United. David, what is your prediction? So I think if, See, if, if Josh... Research if, there, if, that's if, good. Yeah, I'm researching it. right now that... It, it, I do my research before the hey, show. But this scene, during, during he, the he middle does, of it. He but, does it live but during the this show. This scene and I is full of evil. That's right. Full of evil. We do everything in the middle of the day. 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 Finally, we're full of evil. But anyways... <laughs> uh, he, he, I mean, DC United is a, it's a, it's a team, it's a classic team, MLS, you know, it has a long history. But I think right now, I think Austin, Austin FSA is, 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 is going to win 2-0. Two, two like, really? All right. David, you know yeah. that's out the chicken. You know that's out the chicken. You know that's chicken. You know that's the chicken. Jorge. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid of teams like, uh, like uh, Un DC United because they, they tend to be... Different, show a different face for uh, different mm -hmm. games, I think, at least this season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm mistaken, Bruce Arena is there, so he's got tons of experience. Uh, and Bruce, Bruce Arena, uh, New England. New uh, England, I'm Revolution. sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, Another MLS OG. Yeah, yeah another OG, but... Oh, um, somewhere in the East Coast. He's, he's, he's in the East Coast. <laughs> but uh, You're I, defending the Peruvian. Uh, Farmers yeah. League. Coast. Yeah. Farmers <laughs> League. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I went back to my that. way old days when Arena, <laughs> Arena was the coach of D.C. I don't, I don't keep that, up. That is, I don't, that is I don't keep up. Yes, with he, was, so, he was. He uh, So, but but they're sort of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Mm -hmm. So I think they'll show up for this mm -hmm. game. Uh, but 
I have confidence in Austin FC, so I'm going to say it's going to be a 1-1 tie. Oh, okay, a draw, Jorge. A draw. I, I hey. hate to do it to you, but yeah, I'm, when you pick a draw, I know. the chicken will come for I, you. I know. The chicken of indecisiveness I know. is going to go right it, there. I am That's undecided. I agree. Uh, I, I'm going to go 2-1. I think there'll be some goals in this one. I think it'll be back and forth into end, much like the second half of the, the Austin FC Minnesota United yeah. match. And yeah, I, I just think I think this is a, a, a good team right now, a, a good team, Austin FC. So yeah, they have a lot I of confidence will, that yeah. you know they they you know they took them twelve games last year to win three games. It took them only six this time around. So because they knew they knew they had, they only had six. Yeah, it's all because Dami David was said give that That's all no, he was going to give after them. six well, games and see. But I mean, it's too much. I mean, it's too much pressure because all the idea of like the MLS not having a second yeah. division, it make it easy for the coach. Right. And I, yeah, and I will, yeah. Kitty. So I was like, okay, I yeah. give you a pass again, six <laughs> games. You have to look at MLS just games. with such envious eyes, David, as your Santiago Wanderers just tumble down the Chilean yeah, football that's, pyramid. Uh, you have to look, yeah, there you look go. with envy. Still, yeah, still represented. Still represented. Still represented. Look at this. That is MLS. That's still oh, cool. Oh, there you nice. go. Custom very nice. Made. Wow. Hey, very, uh, very, very nice. Guys, tell you, this is the original, not the original, Wonder won in 2001 with this jersey. The they Chilean should bring it National back. <laughs> they should bring it back. <laughs> they did. Oh, from, they did. From 1958. Oh. This is 1958 original. And they, they wow. did. They don't have like the same material. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like those, in those, those, those days, the materials day. were different yeah, than today. Yeah, but I will say one, one thing about DC United that uh, I've heard that there's going to be a large contingent of Austin FC fans that will be attending the game. So All right. Are so, you going? I am not going okay. uh, because I have uh, another commitment, uh, but um, football related, but it's another commitment. Okay. So shout out to my El Paso locomotive who's going to play oh, San nice. Antonio this weekend. Okay. And so there's going to be a lot of Antonio. El Paso fans in San Antonio as well. Nice. So. I've been wanting to go to that stadium yeah, in San Antonio. It looks like it's, a nice it's, really, it's really good. I've, I've been there. Uh, shout out to the Crocketeers. They're a very good uh, supporters group for them. Very friendly, so nice. except for this weekend. But it's going to be friends, also the, the San Antonio's going to play uh, Austin FC, FC too, right? And they're going to yes, play them the, US the, Open the week Cup. after. We'll, yes. probably, we'll probably talk about that in the next show, but yes. Yes, yes indeed. Yes. Okay, before we, we close here, I, I want to talk a little Premier League. Yeah. Because there was a pretty significant yeah. encounter yesterday. Right. Uh, Manchester City 2, Liverpool 2. David, I want to ask you, have you ever seen the sport of football played at a level as high as what Manchester City and Liverpool are playing at right now. Uh, and exactly. I, no. No <laughs> way. No. Hey, I, and you guys were talking earlier about how there big, it is. Jerry's got the table. Just one. How there boring go. was the yeah. Austin FC game if you watch the Liverpool Manchester yeah, City it's, game it's, in the morning? It's not the same level. It's gonna be boring. That's kind of like yeah. Tigres uh, versus. That, that FC probably the happened to me. Yeah, it's gonna happen there, there because the Man City Liverpool both. One point difference now was what a game. I mean, it is just a pleasure to the eyes to be there every second of the game because if you miss one minute, you're going to miss one of the four goals, right? Yeah. But honestly, the, the level, I haven't seen it. The level of precision, the passes, the curious accuracy, the control of the ball and the speed they're playing and touching the ball, it's just unbelievable. It, yeah. And unbelievable. And it's like... You, the only complaint is that about how hard you hit the ball. That's the problem is that mm. those are the problems. You're, like, you're talking at a different level. I mean, and, and, and the coaches are amazing, and the players, and 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 the and the, and the benches, you know, are so as strong as the starter. Right. And of course, there were some players that were very important that were, were missing for Manchester City too, especially the defenders. But Stones did a good job too. I yeah, mean, he even was though very, he kind of made. Good. He was responsible for the first error, right? And yeah. And for the for the Sadio, I think, goal was or the second or the first one. But he was responsible for one of the the goals. But other than that, I mean, the level is just amazing. It's, it's just a pleasure to see football play at that level. And, and we probably had a good time too because Chelsea won six zero against Southampton. Yeah. Now that actually and was so football has never been played at that high a level yeah. as Chelsea played against against Southampton. David, that was it was an amazing. Pinnacle, it was so boring. I went to I went I went to breakfast three times. I went, actually I went <laughs> I went at, at the same. Did you make it? Because usually when the match is boring, that's when you make the breakfast talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was boring because it was already six zero in the seventieth minute. <laughs> and, I, and I went there. Six zero boring, boring, and boring game. game. Breakfast wow. taco right. feast. Huh? No, no, no tacos anymore. I went to oh. get some uh, uh, French baguette. 
Oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Best okay. quality in town. So who who has the advantage though? Let's go back to the city level. Who has the advantage the rest of the way? Is, is it cities right now? They have the one point advantage. They probably have the easier schedule down the stretch. Do, do you think City closes this one out, Jorge? Uh, I I was I will say this. I was a little bit disappointed that Liverpool <laughs> did not take advantage. I feel like the last fifteen uh, minutes, both teams were kind of content for a draw. They, they were happy to get a draw. Well? Yeah, they, they were sort of happy. Which makes just, sense for City because they're right. the ones ahead in the table. But I was a little surprised. Yeah, Liverpool did. Liverpool. Go yeah, for it I, I expected end. them to be a little more aggressive to try to get that win just just for their confidence. But like you said, they have the easier schedule from here on out. So I. Unfortunately, I do see uh, Man City uh, putting off the gas a little bit and maybe concentrate a little more on Champions League. Yes, that, that's Liverpool, their white whale, the Champions right. League. City. That, that's what they really, that's really what they desire. really want, especially since Chelsea won last year. Yes. And Chelsea yes, plays... Uh, you remember that, Real- David, who won the Champions League yeah. last season? It was the best team of the world. <laughs> <laughs> the world champions. Cur- current the world. rainy best team in the yes, world. world. But, uh, Chelsea. but uh, you know, so Chelsea's got a really tough match against Real Madrid. And so I think Manchester City sees, sees a good opportunity to be able to, to capitalize on that. So they may possibly be a little not as aggressive in, in the English Premier League, but, but we'll see. I mean... I mean, this week actually, you know, is, is a key. You know, this yeah, week we have who, who, yeah. who is the the better team out of these two? Is it is it City or Liverpool? I know they played two 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 draws this season. City are one point up. Who is actually the better team? Are they dead even, or, or is one of them better? Do you think? Uh, they're, they're pretty dead even. They're dead, dead even. It's just like you have the player, then you have to talk to about the influence of Luis Diaz coming into Liverpool like nothing. He was playing there forever, and then and then you you see. How good Jesus is playing, yeah, even Jesus, even yeah. though he scored two goals all season, but he scored a gorgeous goal really yesterday. Yes. Goal. Yeah. Yes, uh, so, and he started the game. So it's depending on who is playing. That that's the that how beautiful I see. Uh, I will say Guardiola and and Klopp putting yeah, different was, players was, Here, every I, day. I, I want to get your thoughts on this. I've had an observation. I think in, in years past, I think City were always the better team, but head to head, Liverpool seemed to have the advantage. advantage. Yeah. I actually think City have, have, have made it more equal footing when they played each other because City are now playing a lot more like Liverpool. I mean, look how many times City played <laughs> long, direct balls over yeah. the top, yeah. particularly in that first half with Liverpool's right. high line. And that, that is not something. You go back to Pep at Barca, <laughs> that's not in their DNA. No, 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 no. That's what I was the saying. City has that. evolved the their precision, style, right? The precision that, yeah, you're right. I mean, they, they learn from each other. Those guys. Yeah, they have. Yeah, exactly. And, They've and, learned from each other. And that's why, that, and that because of that, that's why I think Liverpool has been the better team this year because... <sighs> Man- Manchester City had a, had pretty much the lead for the for the on the table for most of the season, and Liverpool had enough talent to catch up to them, yeah. and that's why I give Liverpool the advantage because I don't see them, you know, letting off the gas. They're going to keep going, but so again, they're going to surpass them. Yeah. I, I think, so, you, I think so you're Liverpool going gonna Liverpool. That, yeah, I'm going Liverpool. You might lose the chicken. Yeah, the yeah. Size that. That's a pretty bold yeah. bold take. And, right and I there. say that as a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> Well, <laughs> so that you know, I again, that's pretty bold. That is, that is, yeah. it's and it's very bold, bold to say you're a Chelsea supporter too. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is a little, little bold these days. Here, but yeah, Jerry's throwing yeah. up the, the quarterfinals for the Champions League. This, yeah. this is coming up tomorrow. Are, are the uh, those first two games right there? Right. Um, any any bold predictions on this one? The, the, a big shock in the, the the first leg. I think both of those first two, Villarreal one nil over Bayern. Are Bayern in trouble in that second leg? They, they, they could be. They could be in trouble because Villarreal had other goal that was disallowed. They could have had three or four. They really could so, have had more. I mean, yeah. and they. Uh, more, uh, uh, the coach, you know, he, he had the experience. So it's going to be a tough game for, 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 for Bayern Munich. You, but I think Bayern Munich is going to have the edge at the end of the day, right? I, I kind of they think are so, home, too. And, you know, they had the experience, so I think Bayern, Bayern is going to win. Where, where are you leaning on this one, right? Uh, Bayern uh, Villarreal? Yeah. <sighs> I go with Liverpool. I think I think they're going to pull. Okay, okay, Bayern, Liverpool's going to win. Bayern v Real. Bayern, oh, Bayern, Bayern, Bayern Liverpool. I'm sorry, I was going to say. <laughs> you just go to Liverpool every no, game. No, you go ahead. No, no, okay, yeah, yeah. it's going to be uh, Bayern Munich against Liverpool. I think. In that, in that well, Bayern, I think, is going to feel embarrassed by the last result. So they're going to put up a good fight, I think. And they'll, hey, they might catch up. But I, with the other, with the other games, right? So we have the Manchester City 
against Atletico Madrid. Oh. Five five zero. It may it may make a return. But, yeah, it's, gonna five, five, zero, hey, make a return. but it's gonna be play in in the Wanda Metropolitano with the stadium. It's not gonna be a capacity because Atletico has been hit with punishment for Nazi. Salute oh my doing God. the Etihad wow. I did not know that. Yeah, I did not know. so wow. he did not going to be. It to, to do your research live. Online. Online. With you partial find? stadium closure for Man City this Yeah, season. that's going to give Man City the advantage, I think. So that's yeah. the Manchester yeah, United. That's why it's so think important City to see are really this game. Just the, the better team. We yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And, just, uh, and then the other one is, that, yeah. And the other one, Chelsea or Real Madrid, I think, I mean, sorry, but I have to say that Real Madrid with Benzema. It, it Benzema's on another game. level. I actually it's don't think... I mean, Chelsea were, were really bad in that match. It was one of the worst matches they played all season. Yeah. I don't think Real were necessarily anything special. But Benzema was... Yes, yeah. I mean, which is spectacular. Just on another planet. It, 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 depends, well it, it depends on Benzema really on how he feels for yeah, that game. Yeah. But because he was just a machine. Although I will say, but Chelsea have... Uh, Kai Havertz is in pretty sensational... Form and right now, right, himself. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did rest a lot of Chelsea. Did rest, have the opportunity to rest a lot of the players <laughs> with that six-zero win. So they're a little more healthy uh, and yes. rested. So they might put up a better fight this this time. Around. Uh, how are you going with this one, Jorge? I think Chelsea's going to win. Oh, love it! Absolutely yeah. love it. Another bold. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, you know <laughs> what? Out, Why not? I'm going to stay bold. I think Chelsea can turn it around. I really do. I, okay. I, I don't think Real are that special. Uh, Benzema is exceptional. So is Vinicius. Those two are great. But, but I think Luka, is great. Lukaku is not playing, right? He's hurt. I still hope, hurt. I hope he's not. Not. He's he's not. He's not hurt, right? He's not good in the He's, he's going to mess up the chemistry, so no, no. no. <laughs> okay, that, I think we're out of time here uh, for, for Football in Vivo. Uh, appreciate it, you guys. Excellent show, as always. Programming note, I am not going to be here next week. I'm going to leave the show in you guys' hands. I, I trust you will you will perform yes, well, but well. not too well, yeah, well, because I want to make sure I still have a job. When I <laughs> the next week from, after that, return from vacation. All right, appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys, we'll do it next week. I will not. Okay. Thanks to everyone. Adios.